Former World Snooker Champion Peter Ebden talks to us about being vegan and how that has improved his own health and fitness. I've been a professional snooker player since the 1991-92 season. was fortunate enough to become world champion in 2002. And um, yeah, I've been a professional for over 20 years now. It was nice to win in China earlier this year, back in April. It was the first ranking event I'd won for three years, so that was a really big event. Contrary to what many people believe, snooker requires a level of physical endurance. Could you explain the pressures you face as a player? It's it's very mentally demanding. Concentration for very long periods, and as anybody knows, those long periods of mental concentration are very physically demanding and very physically tiring. So whilst I would never consider myself uh, an athlete by any means, I do run a little bit, but in the last 25 years I've always done a lot of swimming. I, I swam up to two miles a day when I was world champion in 2002. And these days I gen- generally tend to swim about half a mile a day, but the intensity is greater. So whereas in the past I'd probably do half front crawl and half uh, breaststroke I I now tend to concentrate on front crawl and uh, yeah half a mile a a day is is enough for me but obviously the you know the diet is really really important Uh, I've been vegan for almost a year now and that really has changed my life I um, done an awful lot of research on diet nutrition cancer since my dad passed away of lung cancer last year unfortunately and I just found it so absolutely devastating and soul destroying that I really had to find out more um, uh, you know about cancer and about diet and at the age of 41 as I was last year I really started to take my own diet very seriously and my interest was magnified when I went for a routine blood test in February of last year and I got a call back from the local clinic literally within three hours and they said to me what medication are you on what drugs are you taking Mm. and I was obviously quite stunned and shocked and obviously I'd had a very bad result from the blood test that I'd had done earlier in the day and I said to them well I've never taken any drugs in my life and which I haven't and um, I'm on no medication and they said to me well you need to come and see us today and I went to see my local doctor and she said to me your blood liver count is 300 it should be 30. Oh my goodness. Mm. So that was a real wake-up call and what I've subsequently discovered is that long-term sugar abuse pretty much works the same way as long-term alcohol abuse. So in February last year, February 2011, my liver was in a very bad way. Cirrhosis of the liver, fatty liver, whatever you want to call it. It was in a similar condition to somebody that had a really bad alcohol problem. And and although I've drank moderately uh, down the years, I really enjoyed my red wine. I enjoyed my red wine. And, you know, I I, I realized that long-term sugar abuse with, you know, cola drinks and fizzy drinks and sweets and chocolate and, you know, all these things that I now know I shouldn't have been eating, it had a major impact and effect on, on my liver. And fortunately, when t- uh, I decided to go vegan, my, my health improved dramatically and almost instantly. My blood cholesterol went from 5.0 to 3.8 within six weeks. It actually took me four months to get my blood liver count down from 300 to 70. Wow. And uh, 18 months later, I recently had another liver test and my blood liver is now 28. So well within normal. Wow. Um, so to get that from 300 down to 28, you know, on, on a vegan diet and in a strict vegan diet, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased. And my diet now pretty much consists of organic fruits and vegetables. You know, I've also done an, an enormous amount of uh, research in the last 16 or 18 months on diet and, and cancer. And, you know, I, I've seen people reverse cancers on whole foods, plant-based, organic lifestyle. Um, A lot of people have gone perhaps that little bit further and gone raw, been raw vegan and and not uh, cooked vegan. And and I did actually go raw vegan for the month of uh, September and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I would say I'm probably 85, 90% raw vegan now. Occasionally when I'm out with my eldest daughter in Sheffield and we go to a restaurant, we might have a bit of pasta or we might go for an Indian meal and I'll have a cooked uh, vegan meal. But most of the time I'm eating organic fruits and vegetables. And and I say honestly that my, my health has never been better. So I try to help to 
educate my friends and my family. And increasingly that people are reversing health conditions through diet, yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, there is so much research out there. I mean, you know, one of the guys that I've researched is a vegan doctor from America called Dr. Neil Barnard. Yes. Mm. And he wrote a fabulous book, Preventing and Reversing Diabetes. And, you know, he, he pretty much explains out there that, for instance, anybody with type 2 diabetes can go on a whole foods, plant-based diet and almost certainly reverse their type 2 diabetes within 30 days, sometimes within a week. Having read the book, I think the most extreme case that I can remember from the book was a guy that had been a type 2 diabetic for 21 years. He was taking 35 units of insulin a day and after going on a whole foods, plant-based, vegan lifestyle, yeah. After three months, his insulin dependency came down from 35 units a day to eight units a day. Wow. And after a further three months, he was no longer type 2 diabetic. Yeah, lifestyle advice seems to take a real backseat to um, going on to medication straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and if you do the research, it's just, it's just it's unbelievable, really, how we're not taking control of our own health more often. And I think it's quite a sad fact, and, and I think I'm pretty accurate in saying that if it takes a doctor to seven years to become a doctor they do approximately three days on nutrition yes and to be perfectly honest that is a complete waste of three days because when does a doctor ever talk to his patients about nutrition you know I, i've got a, a friend of mine who's in his late 70s and he's a big snooker fan he travels all around the world watching all the players he's a really really lovely guy and um he's been recently diagnosed with kidney cancer and his doctor advised him to eat red meat you know uh, all right i've subsequently found out that he was low in iron which perhaps might help explain why his doctor advised him to have red meat but we know from the latest research that meat and dairy products create an acidic environment in the body which opens up all sorts of possible diseases degenerative diseases including cancer yeah and if we can we need for our blood and our body to be slightly alkaline if possible um with all the sugar abuse that had gone on in my personal experience over the last 25 years it actually took me six months of becoming vegan to turn my blood from acidic to slightly alkaline you know and as i say i've been trying to help my friend and um his doctor wants him to have chemotherapy and you know it's it's a personal choice but what i did do i sent him a couple of books which i i knew i, I thought anyway would be really helpful i sent him uh, a copy of professor t colin campbell's book the china study which i personally think is one of the most important books ever written mm. because it's all about the advantages of a whole foods plant-based vegan lifestyle basically and it explains the pitfalls if you do eat meat and dairy products consistently and i think one of the most incredible things in that book is when uh, Professor uh, Campbell states in there that 87% of the protein in cow's milk is a substance called casein. And casein is a known carcinogen. It causes cancer. Not only that, casein, milk protein, is the protein that they use to inject into mice and rats to create tumours. We're giving that to our children in milk every day. Worrying. Very you know, worrying. It's, it really is, really is worrying. Um, and so I sent my friend who, who's got kidney cancer, I sent him a copy of the China study, and I also sent him a copy of Healing, the Gerson Way, which is a book which... Charlotte Gerson, the daughter of Dr. Max Gerson, she wrote with Beata Bishop. Beata Bishop is a lovely woman in her 80s now, I believe. I met her about six months ago when I was asked to open a new health clinic not too far from Tring. It's the uh, Bagnall Health uh, Centre for Integrative Health. And we jointly opened this uh, new uh, facility. And, you know, I spoke about diet and, you know, I spoke about B12 because I've done a lot of research on B12. And I'm sure, as you're aware, you know, not only vegans and vegetarians, need to know what their B12 levels are but everybody needs to know what their B12 level is because we each have uh, something called intrinsic factor which is individual to everybody and if your intrinsic factor is not working properly you can't utilize the B12 that you get from your food no matter how much meat eggs dairy fish you're eating and you know a lot of meat eaters and dairy eaters a lot of vegetarians and vegans obviously uh, are B12 deficient so you know B12 is massively massively important and you know for your listeners to to understand how quickly your B12 levels can drop. My B12 levels were quite low uh, approximately a year ago. I had a level of 300. Now, in the UK, they don't like supplementing until you get to 200 or below. And I thought, well, I'm eating organic fruits and vegetables.
edibles and, you know, I'm doing the juices and I'm not cutting the ends off the carrots, so there's a chance there might be some B12 in there. So I'll see how I get on. And three months later, my B12 levels had dropped from 300 to 176. And I researched a woman on the internet who was misdiagnosed with multiple sclerosis and in a wheelchair, and her B12 levels were 175. Wow. Wow. She got a second opinion from a doctor who suspected that she might be B12 deficient, run the tests. He saw that she was obviously very low on B12. She literally had a B12 shot and was up out the wheelchair. <laughs> it affects your nerves and B12 deficiency. Oh, absolutely. And there is a fantastic book which I would recommend uh, that to your listeners, which is called Could It Be B12? And it's written by um, a husband and wife doctor team from America, Pachelock or Pachelock and Stewart. Yeah. And it's an absolutely fantastic book. And it really explains how so many cases of B12 are really being uh, misdiagnosed and, you know, linked to autism and all sorts of things. So B12 is the one thing that vegetarians and vegans especially need to know what their levels are. Which um, form of supplementation did you use to um, overturn that? I ended up having the injections. I had a course of four or five injections of hydroxocobalamin and in the UK if you go to your local GP yeah we take a sublingual of methylcobalamin yeah. yes and it's uh, our B12 levels are quite high aren't they yeah. both, are both exceptionally yeah. high mine's yeah. are something like 700 yeah that's very good mm. yeah but uh, but we are, we've always been exceptionally careful that, that's fantastic and you know as you know that you know our soil is deficient now you mm. know very much so compared to 50 years 100 years ago and the two things that we really miss out on in our soil now apparently one is iodine and the other is uh, you know B12 so you know it's a real problem but not just for vegetarians and vegans for meat eaters as well yeah, and like you say, everyone's in the same boat as regarding B12 because you've clearly done a lot of research into a plant-based diet. Yeah. Which foods do you favour on a day-to-day basis? Oh, organic mangoes. I love organic <laughs> mangoes. They are absolutely divine. I've never taken any drugs in my life and I, I defy anybody to tell me that anything in this world tastes better than an organic mango. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. So I eat a lot of organic bananas and uh, organic uh, apples and you know, occasionally when I'm visiting my daughter in Sheffield, I might have a cooked vegan meal, a bit of pasta with a you know tomato sauce. And... You're listening to the Species Barrier on 107.3 Siren FM. This is another reason not to eat meat and dairy. You've got growth hormones, you've got antibiotics, you've got God knows what else that they're pumping into meat and dairy. And, you know, people are becoming resistant to antibiotics. And, you know, all of those growth hormones are no good. And as um, Dr. Neil Bernard says, you really can't win with meat because you have to cook it to get rid of all the bad stuff, all the nasty stuff that can be really harmful. And then once it reaches a certain temperature in the cooking process, it produces something called heterocyclic amines, which cause cancer. So, you know, you really can't win with me. We're just brainwashed, unfortunately, in this society. Earlier this year, you were banned from wearing a logo for the Gerson Therapy at the World Snooker Championship at Sheffield Crucible <laughs> whilst playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. Can you tell us what the Gerson Therapy is? Yeah, the, the Gerson Therapy is developed by Dr. Max Gerson, who, in the late 20s, developed a diet, basically. Uh, initially, it was to develop a diet which would help his migraines. And it was so successful... And he really struggled as a young doctor with terrible, terrible migraines that would last for two or three days. And he researched as much as he possibly could. And one doctor said to him, well, why don't you try changing your diet? And he came from an area in um, Germany where they, he could get lots of organic apples. And he found that once he introduced organic, lots of organic apples into his diet, it really helped his migraines. He then started to find that that same diet, and he experimented all the time, but basically organic fruits and vegetables really helped out um, his, his patients. And one of his patients came back to him one day and said that not only has this diet cured my migraines, it's cured my skin tuberculosis, which at that time was an incurable disease. And Dr. Gerson said, no, that's absolutely impossible. Uh, show me your records. And the patient showed him his records. And 
and he said, look, you know, th this is the situation, this is the medical condition I've got, and now I haven't got it anymore. And so Dr. Max Gerson did more research, he did more tests, and I think there was a more famous doctor at the time in Germany who gave him 450 patients, if I remember rightly, with then incurable skin tuberculosis. And he treated these patients with organic fruits and vegetables and cured 446 of the 450 patients. He then discovered that the same diet would cure cancer. And, and I believe before he published his first book, which is a case of 50 of his uh, first cancer patients, a cancer therapy it's called actually, results of 50 cases, Dr. Max Gerson, MD. And I, I think I'm right in saying that he had approximately a 50% success rate. And obviously that didn't go down too well with certain people uh, in America who perhaps profit from cancer and cancer treatments. And it's, it's very, very sad to report that um, Dr. Max Gerson died of arsenic poisoning. He was poisoned twice, mm. and I'm pretty sure that that wasn't self-administered. Your listeners can learn everything, really, that they need to know about Gerson therapy by going onto YouTube and watching a fantastic film, a fantastic documentary. The film is called The Beautiful Truth, and it's probably my favourite film of all time because it's incredibly beautiful, it's incredibly sad, and it really gives you an idea of what modern society is like. I think I'm right in saying that from the research that I've done, the cancer industry, if you want to call it that, in America alone is worth $100 billion a year. So, you know, are there cures for cancer out there? Almost certainly. Do the powers that be want really people to know? I, I don't think so. You know, because of all the money involved, I think it's, you know, incredibly sad. You know, as with anything, I think the best thing is always prevention. And I think if people were to eat primarily organic fruits and vegetables, I think that their immune system would be very healthy. I think their liver would be very healthy. And, and there's so much research coming out now. I mean, I remember watching one of the videos on YouTube, which Charlotte Gerson made, Dr. Max Gerson's daughter. She's 90 years of age now, and she's fighting this cause. I think it's incredibly sad that there are certain countries around the world that won't have a, a Gerson therapy clinic. They just won't allow it. And, you know, I, I think I'm right in saying, and certainly from my research, I, I believe I'm right in saying that in America, the only option if you've got cancer when you go to your doctor is drugs radiation therapy or chemotherapy. Personally, I'd, I'd rather have organic fruits and vegetables all day long because there are no side effects. And if it can restore your immune system to the point that your liver is functioning correctly and your other organs are functioning well and your immune system becomes strong again, there's absolutely no reason why you can't beat cancer and, you know, these other degenerative uh, diseases. And like you say, prevention is better than the cure. Absolutely. Over here in the UK, cancer charities were very critical of the alternative therapy and the Cancer Act law exists, yep. especially to prevent such advertising so yep. you had to remove your logo uh, why do you think this uh, stigma exists well i mean for me personally in the modern day age i just think that's absolutely ridiculous uh, you know apparently by wearing that logo during the world championship i broke the 1939 cancer act which is a uk act of parliament you know i can understand that in the past that there has been a lot of quackery associated with potential cancer cures but that certainly doesn't apply to to Dr. Max Gerson. In actual fact, Dr. Albert Schweitzer, who won the Nobel Peace Prize, I think in either 1953 or 1954, described Dr. Max Gerson as one of the most eminent geniuses in medical history. You know, this, this man, yeah, yeah, it, it, it abs it, it's so terrible to think that he was curing people of cancer in 1928. Mm -hmm. You know, and here we are now. How many tens of millions of people have died of cancer that perhaps, you know, were, were completely unnecessary? Necessary. And the thing is with organic fruits and vegetables, you don't just cure your type 2 diabetes, you don't just reverse your cancer, you don't just reverse your heart disease, it clears everything up. You know, once you've got a healthy immune system, your immune system just fights everything. You know, I, I think just thinking about that now, I, I remember the other fantastic documentary which I uh, watched, I don't know if you've seen it yourselves, called Forks Over Knives. We certainly have. We put it a film screening on actually in Lincoln. Oh, absolutely brilliant. You know, obviously raising awareness for a whole foods plant based diet. And, you know, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, mm. you know, from Forks Over Knives, one of America's leading heart surgeons for the last 40 years. And I'm sure you know the story of the 18 patients that he took 20 years ago, approximately, who had all had one stroke or had all had one heart attack. And basically, most of these 18 patients have been given between six months and a year to live because their heart disease was so bad. In certain circumstances, he gave them statins, which are cholesterol-lowering drugs, to help them initially. But primarily, the success of that 
uh, research has been down to whole foods, plant-based diet. And 20 years later, not only are 17 out of the 18 people still alive, they've completely reversed their heart disease. Can you imagine if there were a, a drug that you could take out there which would completely reverse your heart disease? It would be the number one bestseller of all time. But that has been proven to be possible with eating organic fruits and vegetables. So why this is not more in the public domain, you only, you, you know, you have to be very, very sceptical. You know, the big pharmaceutical companies, the medical industry, you know, how much money is being made of people being ill? I read in one of the newspapers in the UK about a month ago that there are almost 4 million type 2 diabetics in the UK now. I think the food industries have a big uh, stake in maintaining the status quo oh, as well. With, 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 without a doubt. I mean, again, from the research that I've done, um, I remember, I don't, uh, have you heard of um, Dr. Doug Graham's book, 801010? It talks about excitotoxins in that book. Now, you know, most of the major food and drinks companies employ specialist scientists to create what are known as excitotoxins, which they put into all of the food and all of the drink. And primarily, they do two things. One, they make us addicted to the food and drink. And two, they're neurotoxic. So they cancel out our brain's natural ability to tell our stomach when we've had enough to eat. So these two things, you know, becoming addicted to the food and also being neurotoxic and switching off those receptors which would normally let let our brain know that we've had enough to eat and send us the right signals to, to stop eating they're being switched off so it's creating a worldwide obesity epidemic and really it's not people's fault because they don't know what they're eating and they don't know what chemicals are in the processed foods that they're eating what have reactions been like from fellow players regarding your veganism uh, they all think i'm completely mad because <laughs> you know it is the norm isn't it because you know of advertising and you know family histories and you know the way we're brought up you know English breakfast and all that sort of stuff but unfortunately most people don't do the research and don't realize what's actually in this in, in the foods that they're eating it's uh, whereby excess levels of protein literally turn on cancer genes so as far as I'm concerned for the rest of my life now I'll certainly be vegan and I'll be eating primarily organic fruits and vegetables and you know you've got a higher uh, fat content in avocados but it's a lot of natural goodness in avocados and I, and I personally you know don't think that there's a lot wrong with that avocados and and for somebody that didn't used to eat avocados I absolutely love avocados yeah, now and so I don't good. get a lot of fat in my diet probably apart from avocados after four months as a vegan you won your first ranking event in three years how is your concentration and focus in general life and snooker matches been yeah concentration and focus was absolutely fantastic you know I, i've noticed so many health benefits uh, i've lost three stone in weight in just over a year for me i'm just under six foot one and i'd got up to about 13 and a half stone which was quite heavy for me and i now weigh 10 and a half stone a lot of people are telling me that i look too thin i honestly feel fantastic and i know from my blood work numbers that i've never been healthier in my life so you know my my concentration my focus my stamina everything has gone through the roof and i'm just really enjoying being a vegan you've seen the film earthlings how did that impact you it had a massive impact on me a huge effect and it was incredibly difficult to watch but as soon as i watched that i knew that i would be vegan for the rest of my life and that i could never ever go back that's how much of an impact it had on me absolutely incredible film incredible documentary it is very very difficult to watch it's very very difficult to watch i must admit and i really struggled to watch through it but i thought no i really need to watch this just to see the the cruelty that goes on because you know a lot of us are conveniently ignorant and i was conveniently as ignorant as anybody you know over the last 25 years but not anymore because you know I, I know better i would very strongly recommend everybody watch that film because it's difficult to watch earthlings and not be vegan after that that's my that's <laughs> my honest feeling i don't think yeah. if you watch the full thing i think i, I don't basically went vegan because of it too yep. if you're going to eat the products it's almost the very least you can do isn't it 